it is five after four. And uh, we sent around the agenda for the meeting. And um, so are you prepared, um, Kateri, to, to discuss the yes. uh, yeah. survey? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, well, one of the, I had to talk, call around town and talk to a bunch of people to find out just exactly what the current practice was in town. And I'll, because we had the presentation from uh, Helen Miranda uh, encouraging us to adopt uh, new standards for dealing with a possible water shortage emergencies through drought or some other reason. And uh, things that are mentioned as being significant are uh, filling swimming pools, uh, irrigating lawns and so forth. So I first wanted to find out what regulations there were in town. So I, I talked over to Hillary and she said, oh yes, you know, everybody with a pool has to get a permit. We, we know there are approximately 60 of them in town. But she said, you know, as far as I know, everybody fills the pool by having a truck, truck pump and pump out water in there. They don't use their own wells or the town systems. So that's a need that we don't have to worry about in this town. Now, and then I took a while longer to find out what about, you know, people who had irrigation uh, systems. And it turns out there is no uh, requirement to get a permit for that or to register with the town on that. So basically, we don't know how many people have that. Now, according to the regulations as presented uh, by Helen Miranda, the only thing that would be permitted would be handheld hoses. They were okay. And they didn't also things that were restricted would be things like washing cars which to me doesn't sound like something that takes a whole lot of money, I mean, a whole lot of water, and also do things like washing down your driveway or your front sidewalk and so forth. So I guess I came away with the decision to recommend that we, I don't think we really need anything like this in town, at least not at the moment. Yeah. I see Tom has joined us as well. Oh, yeah. Do you have anything to add, Tom? Let me see. He might be on the phone and then. Yes, I am. I'm seeing you, but I'm on the phone. There you okay. go. You're all set. Okay. Uh, uh, Katharina was absolutely right. I was no help to her at all this month. And I apologize for that. But I think she was absolutely right in that we. Uh, you know, uh, we're getting in over our heads, things we don't need to do. Yeah. I know that um, the one of the standards that uh, Helen Wilson had um, provided us was what's done down in Provincetown. And that's really, uh, I believe, um, what they've done there it has to do with um, reducing water consumption, particularly in the summer months. And, and for good reason in Provincetown, given that the volume of water that uh, uh, they use down there. Um, so uh, we, we, we're not in that situation here at Walton. Um, uh, the, uh, um, also, I would say that um, we can revisit this at any time. And should we decide to um, uh, add additional restrictions on water, water usage uh, and under drought conditions or whatever. Um, uh, I mean, we can do that, but I appreciate what you been looking into it, Katarina. And I think that our experience to date with say sprinkler or irrigation systems has been primarily like with a couple of town properties, particularly the school where they um, were they were using town water for I believe the first year that they were on the system they were using it for irrigation of the ball field and found that it was very expensive mm -hmm. so I would imagine that we would have 
um, other people who, if they're using it, would experience the same thing. It, um, it's, it could easily go over the, uh, the base rate in the summer months. Yeah, I would imagine. I would yeah. imagine. And it got to be very expensive. Not, right. In fact, as I recall, it was over. It was a couple thousand dollars for, for in one summer. Right. Right. Incurred um, for the water, the irrigation at the school. So, um, and the, so they're using I, their. Yeah. I was thinking of, do we need to be specific about our drug our drought uh, considerations, or should uh, should we leave that an option and until we have to experience it. Well, no, I we, think, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, Jim. Go ahead. All I was going to say is the test wells that are exist here in Wellfleet have not shown any significant change in the water level over the years. Um, so, I mean, even, you know, during the summer months or whatever, there's no, um, no, no significant drop in the, in the water level in those wells. So, so there is, think, go ahead. Go ahead, Gary. No, no that, saying, you go ahead. Okay. Uh, in, the, in the regulations I got, uh, the Wellfleet Municipal Water System regulations, the last thing in the regulation says that they can declare a state of water emergency if there exists a water shortage or a declaration of emergency has made, been made under the Massachusetts general law, but they don't have any drought management plan at, at present. So, and I don't think we need to add anything in right now. Right, right. right. I mean, I, I would think in a town like this, if you just send a message around, it's like, folks, we're having a problem, please don't water your lawns. I think you get a pretty high level of compliance with that without getting into setting up somehow this would be monitored and what the penalties would be and all the things if we went the way that, you know, uh, had been suggested by Helen Miranda. Right, right. All right. Um, so if there's nothing else on that, I think we can close the discussion on the, the water content guidelines. Um, I want to go over, I, I sent out to you folks the, um, the enterprise fund year to date expenditure for the mm -hmm. current year. Um, it's one of the attachments. Um, um, if you may recall back when we were trying to put the budget together uh, a few months back, we did not have these uh, the current year numbers. And um, uh, Jean Brary in the accounting department has now provided us with that. They have the, all of our data has been entered into the system. He had a little trouble trying to line it up against the uh, 2020 budget um, that was approved at last year's town meeting. But I think uh, we can go through those and explain what the issues are. So what I'm looking at here is the document that's a ledger history, uh, variance expend and expenditure ledger. Um, the, uh, for example, the first line in there is the shared salary that we have for the department. And that's just, that um, is for, um, for example, for Rebecca, a, a portion of Rebecca's salary is in. Uh, the other, the, I think the, the major ones that I wanted to draw your attention to in here was contract services, mm -hmm. uh, which is about the uh, third line down. Um, the budget estimate on that was 3,500, and to date it's showing uh, a, a, a negative variance at 36,199. And that's due, and what I found out was that uh, they had originally put um, the, a substantial portion of um, the expenditures for repairs and maintenance got lumped in there, as well as the Penichuk uh, expenditures. And you may recall that with Penichuk, we were, um, the initial payments for Penichuk amounted to for the uh, software upgrades uh, that were required for us to 
uh, utilize their billing system with our uh, meter system. Uh, was in the range of, I believe, uh, about 17 or 18,000. And that, not all of that got billed in the first year. So a substantial portion of it is included in that, that negative variance uh, that resulted in total payments in the contract services line of 39,000. In addition, um, there was um, some expenditures that were associated with Whitewater um, that ended up in that line, and that was in the repairs and maintenance. So I think that Gene was going to revise this, but that's why the numbers were so far off before. But the bottom line with this, when we were asking for this, was because we had to do the work, of, and we're going to be talking about this in a moment, on um, the well site repairs at the Boy Scout camp. Did we have the money to do this? And in fact, we do. And so I will explain that as we, when we get down there, um, that the, uh, to that item in the budget. But uh, so this is the, I just wanted you to see this. This is the, uh, the expense ledger for the current year. Um, and if you go all the way to the bottom on the second page, you'll see that we have an ending balance there, positive a variance of 36,645. That's all the way on the right-hand side over there. And so we're okay at this point. We are, we have not um, overspent overall on the budget. I mean, there may be some inner line changes that need to happen in order to correct this, but um, we, uh, but it is not a, a problem at this point. Um, and uh, if you go back on the first page for a moment, because it's the, the next item that's on here is the Boy Scout camp. Well, recall that we had a problem where um, one of the wells at the Boy Scout camp um, failed, and we believe it was a lightning strike. Um, and that happened a few weeks back. And uh, Russ Tierney um, did uh, have Mahar Services come in, pull that uh, pump, and uh, to check it and indeed it was the motor and the pump was uh, uh, had been fried essentially so it has to be repaired and there is uh, in here there's uh, amongst the attachments that you will see was also a uh, an estimate or an actual proposal from the har services for for uh, up for improvement to do the work to repair the pump and reinstall it. And um, that was 9,425. And that will come out of the Whitewater Contingency Loan, which is uh, 25,000. And we have a balance in that of 18,602. So we're fine on that line that we can go ahead and use that those funds to, um, to uh, pay for that well repair. Um, and so even if the work is not done before June 30th, we can obligate the funds um, and so that we have them for that work. Any questions? Okay. Um, so uh, the next item on here is the water enterprise budget for 2021 and that is in of course in one of the attachments as well um, and there's as far as to date there's no change in what that contract is or what that budget is as it stands this is what we reviewed before so there's no need at this point to uh for any kind of a vote on this it's, it's for, it stands as uh, it was prepared before by uh, um, Dan. And uh, so it, we have uh, expense, total expenses of 284,663 proposed for the year, the 21, and uh, total receipts of this, the same amount as well. Uh, and that includes the general fund subsidy of 143,000. And unless we hear something different, this is what will get presented at the 
town meeting in the fall. But we're currently, as you probably know, we're currently we're spending at the rate of one twelfth of the 2020 um, budget um, that was approved, and that was a requirement that the state uh, instituted in order to uh, allow us to continue to operate through, uh, the, you know, into the new year, um, to, assuming um, one twelfth uh, or one month's expenses for each month that we don't have an approved budget in place. Uh, any questions on that? Mm -mm. No. Looks good. Okay. Understand. Okay. So on the Boy Scout camp, which is the next item on that, uh, I have authorized Russ Tierney to go ahead and to contract with Mahar Services for the repair of the pump and the reinstallation and reinstallation of that into the well. As you know, we only have the two wells there, and this so one of them is out of service at this point. Um, we're hoping that they will complete those repairs, uh, you know, as quickly as possible, and get that uh, that pump back up and running. We have so we do have one well running there at the Boy Scout camp, and we have two wells running at the um, Coles Neck well site. So. Uh, we're fine with it so far with this. The next item that's on the agenda is the Boy Scout camp. Not so. I'm sorry. Is the SCADA system replacement? And um, the we did get approval from the state from housing the housing choice program to utilize a portion of the grant funds, the hundred thousand dollar grant funds to uh, affect the, re the replacement of the SCADA system since it is an integral part of the water system. And the purpose of that housing choice grant, as you may recall, was for us to make improvements to the, to the water system so that we would be uh, able to accommodate um, the, the affordable housing project. But the SCADA system is an, is an integral part of that. And, they were, the Housing Choice Program was fine with us using the funds for that purpose. Uh, the um, Jim, Tim, uh, Russ Tierney actually just joined the meeting. So if you have any questions for him, he's on. Who, who did? Uh, Russ oh, Tierney. Yeah, I see, okay. So um, Russ, you wanna say anything more about the well at the Boy Scout camp? Sure, sorry, I, for some reason I had 4.30 in my head. Sorry about that. <laughs> I am. Um, yeah, it's all, the spots are ordered, and uh, he should be in within a week or so to install it, but I'll keep you posted. So Great. they ordered all the parts, right? And um, so we are operating essentially with, uh, what is like three wells at this point, two at Calls Neck and one at um, Boy Scout, is that correct? Uh, two at Calls Neck, one at Boy Scout. Right. Um, but we've not had any problems as far as you know, right? Is that... No. Uh, and so on the SCADA system replacement. Um, yes. The, I, Mike and I uh, have been working on getting an RFP together um, to send out. And we used uh, the proposal that um, but what Dylan had prepared as yeah. the kind of basis for that. However, uh, talking with Mike this morning, um, looking back at what we did back in 2010, when the there was an RFP release for enhancements to the data system for the water tower and for the Boy Scout camp, um, and it was quite lengthy. It was prepared by environmental partners and concern we based on this was that um, if we don't do a complete um, you know RFP and with all the requirements on that whether or not that's going to be problematic for us going forward since we're using state funds uh, so actually I'm going to uh, contact uh, 
environmental partners to see if they can give us a um, better price on um, if we, uh, just basically updating the the RFP that they did back in 2010. Oh, I got you. Okay. Yeah. Pardon? No, I got you. I understand what you're saying. Go ahead. Yeah. To upgrade the RFP so that we do, so it is in compliance with all the requirements. And um, I think that we would be in a better position if we do that. Originally, what Paul Millett told me was when I asked him about doing that, he suggested it was going to cost like 15000 just for the um, engineering costs associated with that proposal um, you know, to, to put that together. And that seems excessive, considering the fact that we know that the proposal that Butch put together for us for to replace the system um, was forty five thousand. So it's I think I think what he's probably referring to is engineering to upgrade the skater, which you don't need. But I will give him a call myself tomorrow. Well, I, I was going to yeah. I mean, basically, what we really want is uh, you know him to use. I, I I have the documents that we've gotten from Butch, yeah. as well as the his recommendations on the equipment that needs to go in there. To, the replacement equipment, um, but I would feel more comfortable if they if they just basically took did already and just add uh, additional information, and that yeah. then we because uh, we anticipate that the only company that's really going to respond to this is probably Bush. Um, um, they uh, if the, you know for any of the other companies to come in. Uh, it, you know, and which would require them to also manage the service on it going forward. That's that's going to be uh, really a headache for any of them, you know, from off Cape. Yeah, I understood. Let me see what I can find out. If not, I'll go. I'll go to his boss. That's that's just a lot of money, and I think he's really thinking about the uh, engineering part of a skater system, which. We don't need here. We just need some no, upgrades. No. And they did this already for us back in 2010. Yep. yep. Uh, just dust off that document and uh, you know, update it. Understood. Um, any other comments on that? Um, I think we went through the, all the documents that we have. Um, um, Rebecca, do you have anything that you want to report on? I can tell you that you'll have um, quite a bit of revenue coming in because all the water bills, the reads were successful after a couple times trying and the bills are out. All right, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I did get all the deferred payments out because they're due now. So um, we sh you should be having getting some revenue in within the next two to three weeks. So I'll be in the office at least once to twice a week now just so I can process those payments and they get put into your account. Um, also, I think um, I should note that um, the water main for this, the fire suppression at the Historical Society was uh, installed at the, at the building last week. So that's a six inch main that's going into that. And Robert B. Auer did that work. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was charged with the Historical Society. Right. Um, that went Pardon? That went in quickly. It did. They, it was like one day they did it. They just they did it by using a mole. Um, are there any other new uh, um, requests for service, Rebecca? Um, not that. Not on any properties that we're bringing out the line to just yet. 
like I had, I think I emailed you, it was like Point Pleasant Road or something, and they wanted to know if the water was going to be there. And I said, as of right now, it doesn't look like it's going to be um, brought out, but that that's pretty much it. I do have a lot of people wanting to pay off their deferred payments. So I've gotten two or three that have, um, that are paying them off this week, which is, is kind of good. So other than that, no. Yeah. You know, that, that uh, brings up a point about if you, if you go back to the, um, the expenditures uh, budget for the current year or the actually the uh, budget for, for the current year, uh, one of the things that we don't have is a clear reconciliation of revenues that have come in in 2020 for new service. We had a fair number of new services installed in, in this past year. And uh, I can actually get that for you if you want. And I, I can email it to you. Yep, yeah. I'll do that. I'll do that tomorrow when I'm in the office. Any other Excuse me. Is there anything new on uh, Ryder Court? No, you're talking about with Thor? Yes. No. I've not heard anything more. Not the problem. I hear so much rumble around town with other, you know, other boards. But uh, I was wondering if we had any new output. No, I think that there were issues with uh, zoning that they were addressing initially. So I don't know where that stands. Yeah. Things, yeah. So the uh, next item that's on here is the minutes of the meeting of May 19th, correct? I propose we accept the minutes as written. Okay. okay. Any, um, any comments, questions on the minutes? Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Okay. So we will take, um, you know, a voice vote from the um, commission commissioners. So, um, Neil? Yes. Okay. Um, Katari? Sorry, I just had a phone call from my husband, but yeah. what are you saying? Did I did I'm asking for a, a vote on the minutes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Tom? Yes. Okay. And we got one from Neil, and I, I agree. Uh, except the minutes. So um, it's four, four of us. All right, now you guys can decide on your next meeting. True. If you go two weeks, it's June 30th, or you can do July 7th. It's up to you guys what you want to do. I, I, I would prefer the 7th. Yeah, okay. So would I. Who's um, that, Jim? July 7th. 7th. July 7th. I, I agree. Uh, is, this, is this time still okay for everybody? Yeah, this works out well. Yeah. I'm sorry, I forgot to turn the camera on for my laptop, and I didn't want to do it in the middle for fear I'd disconnect. That's all right. But you don't want to see my hair anyway. Oh, <laughs> well, we'd like to see your smile. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I, I figure I have an Irish afro. It's white, and it sticks out all over. <laughs> So, um, agenda items for that meeting. Well, I think we would, um, obviously we'll have maybe some updates on like the um, Boy Scout camp and the SCADA system. Also, I, I hope that I'll be able to report then on the progress on the uh, application for uh, the um, Mass Works grant that would be yeah. for the installation oh, yeah. of the new water main. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that um, the uh, the process is now open. 
for, new, for applications to be submitted. And the submission date or window is the third week of August. We're going to be working on this now. And as you may recall, uh, one of the things that um, um, in that application, we uh, had agreed that we were going to use environmental partners to assist us with the technical components of that, of that application. And um, so uh, we will be working with Paul Millette on that, uh, which is what uh, the town of Truro did when they put in their application last year. Um, and uh, so uh, I don't know yet what that's going to cost us. Paul, did, Paul said he did not think it would be that much. It's not that significant the amount of work that has to be done. That but know that the, the, the expense for that um, has to come out of uh, our budget, the enterprise fund budget. We cannot use the housing, cho housing choice grant for that. Um, That's for the engineering. It, yes. The choice will be made at town meeting? Well, the, it's still, it has to come up at town meeting as to, um, yes, as to what, what, what we're going to do. They have to approve the, um, you know, the borrowing authority, uh, which would be 3.8 million in the event that we don't receive um, any um, grant funding for this. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So, um, if there's nothing else, I propose that we close the meeting at this point. Unless there's any comments from any of our visitors, if there are, you know, please raise your hand. <laughs> Gail gave up on us, maybe? I don't, no. I don't have any. Go ahead, Gail. I just want to say, see you on the 7th of July. Okay. <laughs> More or less. Right. And, and who was new? That was our friend from the- uh, they ju He just, um, the person just said, he, just on to listen. Oh, okay. Okay. Rebecca, how, how do you raise your hand? Um, there's a little, if you're on your phone, I'll have to look into it. But I know if you're on your computer and you move your mouse down, it says, yeah. um, you can go and it says more. Hang on. More? Okay. Actually, if you go to your, um, yeah, I wonder where your thing is. Hold on. I hate to tie everybody up, but I think anybody might, somebody else might want to know also. Okay. Oh, Rebecca, wait a minute. There, Rebecca. <laughs> yes. This is Gail. I see it at the bottom of the participants uh, window on my Yes. Note. Yes. It says raise hand. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ooh. Oh, reaction. There you go. Oh, not oh. more. React. Okay, let's, am I raising just, my hand now? No, you just gave me a thumbs up. <laughs> you, have to, you have to have. You have to have the participation. <laughs> you, you have to have the participation window open. Then if you have not, a clap. Now it's correct. clapping. Yeah. Up, don't I know? No, you're clapping. <laughs> Where's the clapping? Where's yeah. the hand up? I get clapping. I got thumbs. Oh, yeah. that's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't want to chat. That's all. Those are the only options I have. <laughs> okay. um, Here we go. Clap, clap, thumbs up, chat, or record. Go to participants. Participants, okay. I get nothing. It's just, oh, wait a minute. Here we go. It's a Zoom chat. Oh, now I got the same screen again. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe next time. <laughs> Every once in a while, unmute me and I'll scream. Okay. <laughs> well, we lost Jitterbug right. Smart. He went to Thank the other map, I think. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. Right. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye, Rebecca. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Rebecca, you'll be in the office tomorrow? I will be in the office. I have a doctor's appointment at nine and then I'll be in after that for the, for the afternoon. So okay. I have a, a couple of customers that 
but I just wanted to check with you on on the status of those. Okay, okay. I'll let you know not when stuff, I'm in the office. Not stuff that that's, uh, would have to be dealt with in the meeting. So. Okay. All right. All right. Great. Thank Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye Russ.